from the IISS, but based in Paris, Louis Montaz. Thank you, John. Uh, Minister Prabo, by saying we shouldn't put blame on any side of the war in Ukraine, you basically drew an equivalence between the invader, Russia, and the invaded, Ukraine. So my question to you is, does the non-aligned position in 2023 consist in encouraging aggressors? How could this provide a sustainable and just peace? And is this coherent with everything we've heard since this morning about the importance of upholding rules and order in the Indo-Pacific and, and how might does not make right? Thank you. Thank you. To use the proper language and to bring some clarity, saying there is no Ukrainian-Russian conflict, there is Russian invasion of Ukraine. And there are no disputed territories in Ukraine because Ukraine only has the territory of 1991, which was uh, established and uh, has not uh, changed since then. So this is the only internationally recognized borders of Ukraine. But I think there is a major illusion also that if we have a ceasefire, as it is now, we will have a decrease in atrocities. Actually, I think that it will only bring not to uh, cessation of atrocities, but actually to increase in them. Uh, giving Russia a free hand in uh, raping Ukrainian women, in uh, killing civilians, and also in kidnapping Ukrainian children from the occupied uh, To Germany, Johan Vadefou. Thank you very much. I would also like to refer to the proposals from uh, Minister Popovo to solve the uh, conflict in Ukraine. I would like to ask you, Minister, why didn't you address the Russian aggression, uh, that this was the only reason for this conflict, and that if uh, Ukraine stops to defend itself, uh, the sovereignty of Ukraine uh, would be gone, and if Russia stops the war, uh, the conflict would uh, come to an end. And if we follow your proposals uh, to come to a ceasefire, wouldn't this only cement uh, a new frozen conflict in Europe? Thank you. Thank you very much. And simply on uh, your ideas on Russia-Ukraine, non-alignment, and also the Myanmar issue. Yes, uh, John, thank you. I don't, I don't know if I can answer these questions in three minutes, but I will try. Uh, several questions uh, insinuated that I'm equating between the invader and the invaded. I think this is, a, is an emotional uh, reaction, but what I'm putting forward is conflict resolution. I'm not saying which side is right or wrong. And I think this is being taken mistakenly because Indonesia's position is very clear. In the United Nations, we voted against the Russian invasion. We voted. You can check our voting record. We are not talking about right or wrong. I'm just proposing that we attempt at conflict resolution and this has been done historically. Please, our European friends, please do not think in terms of five or ten years. Think in terms of 50 years. We in Asia, we have our share of conflict of war. Maybe more, more disastrous, more bloody than what's being experienced in Ukraine. Ask our Vietnamese friends, our Vietnamese brothers, ask our Cambodian brothers, ask them how many times they've been invaded. Ask our Vietnamese friends how many times we have been invaded. Ask Indonesians how many times we have been invaded. We know war. We want to resolve. We want to help. But again, it's up to the two parties. The United, what is the United Nations for, if not for conflict resolution? Why is a proposal for a demilitarized zone so
taken as if it's not rational. We had, we have a demilitarized zone in Korea. We had a demilitarized zone between North and South Vietnam. We had a demilitarized zone in the Sinai. We have now United States monitoring force in many countries. There are conflicts not only in Europe. There are violations of sovereignty, not only in Europe. Ask our brothers in the Middle East, ask the Africans, ask the people of the Democratic Republic of Congo, how many countries invaded them? There are United Nations forces in the Congo. So what I'm proposing is how we try to resolve this conflict by respecting the United Nations. That's all. I'm not equating aggression with the aggressors. Please understand, we in this part of the world, we have been victims of aggression many, many times. I think that's my uh, answer. And for Myanmar, very clear that uh, uh, ASEAN has uh, not accepted the authoritarian and uh, the, uh, the activities and the lethal actions of the Myanmarese military regime against their own people. So that is very clear. Saya Niluh Puspa. Saksikan program-program Kompas TV melalui siaran digital, pay TV, dan media streaming lainnya. Kompas TV, independen, terpercaya.